First of all, Neil Oliver, thank you so much. Uh, you are a GB News correspondent on the platform. And of course, you're right in the heart of Stirling in Scotland. And, you know, it's, it's a remarkable time, isn't it? And I just wanted to know, first of all, what, it, what it's like in Scotland at the moment, people pouring in to, to see that coffin in, in Edinburgh. It, well, it's a, first of all, it's a pleasure to see you again, Leanne, hear your voice, see your face. It's good to be in contact with you. Uh, yes, it's, a, it's a, an intense uh, and emotional period for a lot of Scots. Uh, as you'll probably have seen on, on the news somewhere, there's huge crowds formed spontaneously in Edinburgh. Uh, also, the, the Queen was, uh, uh, her late Majesty's coffin was, was brought from Balmoral uh, to Edinburgh via Aberdeen and then through, you know, a, a large part of the, of the territory of Scotland was traversed by that, by that uh, procession. Mm. Uh, people were turning out all the way along. Uh, farmers were lining the route with tractors all you know forming sort of, uh, impromptu guards of honor uh, and then in edinburgh massive crowds 10 20 deep on the on the royal mile uh, all of it just uh, spontaneous you know this is just people uh, uh, responding naturally sure. and it it's quite it's quite a sight to see i think it's it's very i think sim symbols matter and the fact that the queen uh, died in balmoral died in scotland uh, of which she was so fond. Right. And the, the fact that that first stage of her last journey uh, has seen her come through Scotland, uh, has seen her lie in rest uh, in St Giles, which is the High Kirk of Edinburgh, uh -huh. uh, the, the first people that have had that chance to go and, and perform that ancient rite, really, of, of passing by the mortal remains of the monarch, mm. the fact that that's happened is happening in Scotland. It's very symbolic because obviously this has been a, a united kingdom under pressure uh, in terms of those who want the union to continue and those who don't. Yes. And I think this this underlines, it shows in a way that really nothing else would, uh, the numbers of people who feel very much bonded together as a British population, as a British family, a British community, uh, it, this an event like this underscores the ties that bind, uh, and so previously we've heard a great deal from you know nationalist politicians saying that mm. you know Scotland wants to be different, wants to go its own way. Mm. This is a this is a very clear symbolic demonstration of the number of people who quite demonstrably feel an attachment to something British. Right, it is an interesting one, isn't it, for the Scottish independence movement and. And and it's just, I, I suppose, in some ways, do you think then the fact that she passed in Balmoral and that she always expressed her incredible love for Scotland and it seemed to be where she felt most at home, so is that really going to put paid to any any kind of calls to to pull away to become independent, Neil? What do you think? You know, uh, that's, the whole? that's real. <laughs> You're in real crystal ball territory there. Yeah. You know, as we say, a week is a long time in politics. It's it's probably a long time in constitutional matters as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but who knows what the future holds? But I, I, there's just no denying. I think I, 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 my my motivation a, a lot of the time is history. I, I'm fascinated by history, and no matter what a person's emotions or not about this death or the politics or not about this death. Mm. There's no denying that the death of Queen Elizabeth II is a moment of global history. Mm. It's not just British, you know, you know, this is a woman who was known around the world as the queen. Mm. You said the queen anywhere and people knew exactly who you meant. You didn't have to say the queen of Great Britain or the Queen of England, you just had to say the Queen. The queen. Mm -hmm. And this, it's, it's a huge moment. You know, so whether or not you're having the the emotional response to it, you know, when I phoned my mum when the, when the news broke and asked my mum how she was, and she, you know, she had cried, mm. uh, and you know, there's a there is a, an outpouring of of grief and emotions. So that's mm. for some people, but for for all of us, this is a moment that heralds change. Uh, the landscape, the fabric of Britain is forever altered. There's not many people alive in Britain, in the world, who can genuinely remember a time before Queen Elizabeth was on the throne. That's right. This is a this is a huge moment. As to what it 
as, it, as to what it predicts about uh, the future of uh, relations between Scotland and England, it's very, very difficult. I, I think it's simply interesting. The, the, the Scottish National Party have been very effective in putting out a message that they speak for Scotland and everything you hear from Nicola Sturgeon or from the nationalist movement Yes. speaks on behalf of all five million Scots. Mm. Something like this, uh, without people having to say anything, just by their just by their actions and deeds and gestures, mm. you are you are made to pay attention to the the thousands, the hundreds of thousands, the millions who do feel part of Britain, and who 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 did feel connected to the monarch, uh, and who have been also reminded of the fact that the wellspring of of the Stuart line of the of the royal of the monarchy right. as we have it, the wellspring is Scotland. It, it came out of Scotland, and and the connections to Scotland are profound and deep. Uh, and it's simply historically fascinating to watch how many people have been almost almost just spontaneously reminded or reminded spontaneously to respond to an event. It's just it's just history global history happening right before our eyes and, the, and, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and the, fact, the fact that at the moment the epicenter of it is Scotland mm. and indeed the capital and the High Kirk in Edinburgh it's enormously symbolic yeah. and whether you're the most cynical person on earth or a true believer there is just no denying that symbols matter mm. and these events will be remembered mm. you know there'll be youngsters coming through for whom their only memory of the Queen mm. is this mm. her dying and this procession through Scotland and then yes. you know yes. and lying in rest and then the, and and all that unfolds once uh, once the Queen is back in in London that mm. will be how they remember mm -hmm. and the, the, some historical events resonate long after they've happened uh, at the very least it will be very interesting to see what happens next yeah totally do you think that King Charles has much support? in Scotland he's got, he's got enormous shoes to fill and so far the verdict seems to be that he's doing pretty well but has he got to win over people I, I, I would have thought so I, you know who, who who gets to follow who gets to follow the queen you know that you know that's like following King Kong <laughs> you know how do you right. how do you go and how do you go and make your presence felt after yeah, right. you know that, that that diminutive little person that was Queen Elizabeth II oh. but the you know the space that she leaves behind is is considerable mm -hmm. um I think what it it's often I think worth remembering that you know when a when a when a private soldier salutes an officer they're not saluting the person they're saluting the rank sure you know and and something of the same sort or, or very much the same thing applies here mm -hmm. so when you you can remove the personalities in a sense you can take it away from the personalities mm. and and recognize that what we seem to be seeing at the moment is people uh, voting with their feet and 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 broadcasting with their gestures that they want something. And, and what they seem to want is the continuity, the continuation of the monarchy, the constitutional Why? monarchy. You know, yes. we're living in a, a world now where a lot of people are very suspicious about a, a new world order and, and a great reset and, and a one world government. Mm -hmm. Whatever the truth of that, it, it difficult to get to the bottom of, but, but people are talking about it and a lot of people are very worried about it, this idea of, of, uh, of control and governance being taken away from where they are mm -hmm. and centralized somewhere else and, and them just hearing you know diktats from people they didn't elect yeah. by demonstrating this support for the for the 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 notion of constitutional monarchy I think you're seeing what a lot of people want yeah. and, and the monarch regardless whether it's Queen Elizabeth II or, or King Charles III or whoever, they're they are uh, voting with their feet and acknowledging that they they want the idea of a sovereign, and sovereign's a big word, mm. and and that, that idea of uh, the sovereignty of Britain, mm. that Britain is is an entity, you know, Britain almost as a personality, mm. and rather than see that personality and that 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 independence and that individuality ceded to. A one world government somewhere else. I think mm -hmm. in part what you're seeing is people saying 
consciously or unconsciously, that they are aware of the something that is Britain. Yes. And they are aware of what the constitutional monarchy means, what it stands for in relation to individual human rights. Right. The, the sovereignty, not just of the monarch, but the sovereignty of, of the individual. Mm. You, me, the, so, the sovereignty of the individual mm. is, is, is woven through what is being declared here. Mm. And by, by people turning out and saying that they want to have seen the Queen as she, as she passed through in her final journey, mm. and people saying that they're, they're in support of the next monarch, the, co the continuation of that, Mm. It's simply interesting. Mm. It's like it's like I think people the the feeling I had was it felt like the world was less secure, less stable without having the keep calm and carry on presence of Queen Elizabeth, who was a rock for for so long for so many people. So I think, do you think that's a, a big factor, Neil? That it's just been like we've been through a bit of an ordeal, you know, uh, lately. The world's quite divided, and you know, COVID. Let's face it, has has put certain people against other people, and it's been it's been dreadful. And so, do you think people are just saying, well, listen, we, we need this to continue. We need someone that we can rely on to be to stand firm. Uh, yes, I think so. Like, there will never, there will never be, uh, and this is again. I think this is just a uh, a justifiable, uh, objective observation. Mm. There will never be uh, another uh, queen like the queen. Yeah, there will never be another monarch like that. Mm -hmm. She was there for seventy years, and and she bridges a, a, a river of time. Right. That, that reaches out of sight for most people who are alive today. You could have gone to the to the most forgotten corner of the world and encountered someone and said the queen and that individual, there's a fair bet they would have known who you meant mm -hmm. in a way that will never happen for any uh, US president or any you know president of the European Union or or whatever. Sure. That that opportunity to be the queen has passed. Yeah. That time that that created and then cradled uh, and 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 perpetuated the queen across all of that time, it's mm. gone. That that is that we're now in a we're now in a different place. Mm. And yes, for for all well for most people for almost everyone, unless you know my mum is in her late eighties and she genuinely can remember a time before, uh, you know she <laughs> yeah, can remember right. George the sixth and whatever. Right. But yes. most but most of us cannot, mm -hmm. uh, and that. I think that is that is a, is, is a significance, and people were able to just take the queen for granted. Yes. Whatever else was happening, it was, people were telling all sorts of. You know, <laughs> there's a, there was a very. I mean, for example, this is just a random example, but but someone on on GB News was talking the other night about the fact that the queen had come to Aberfan, which was a Welsh mining town uh, that had a devastating tragedy oh, the in, in the early 1960s, yeah. where the the, mm -hmm. the 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 coal wastes that yes. became waterlogged slipped down the hills and engulfed the town and, and mm. killed hundreds of children in a school. Mm. And the Queen came there. Now, but you can you can mention any event mm. for the last 70 years, and, and it happened in the shadow of the Queen. Yes, true. What, yeah. Whatever else was happening, the Queen was there. <laughs> you know, like a you know, she's just like you know, like a like a church steeple or a or a or a, or a town cross or a war yeah. memorial. Yes. She's just there. Yeah. Whatever your emotions were about, or whether you whether you felt that that visceral connection, or whether you loved the Queen, or you, or you were a Republican and you hated the monarchy, she was still there. No matter, she was just there. This, mm -hmm. you know, the, there's a great and there was a great uh, when when Churchill died and lay in state uh, in Westminster Hall. Uh, there was a paragraph on the, which was the opening paragraph on the front page of the, I think the Daily Mirror, mm -hmm. uh, and the and the paragraph w went. Um, uh, it was lying in state, and people were were, were doing the same thing they're doing in St Charles. He said, two yeah. rivers run, two rivers flow through London tonight, and one is made of people, dark and silent as the night time tems itself. It flows through Westminster Hall, eddying about the foot of the rock called Churchill. Mm. Now, that's a grand paragraph. That's a, <laughs> that's a cracking bit of writing, yeah. but you could probably say something similar about Elizabeth II for many people. And you, you, yes. you can't be, you can't judge or criticize people for the way they naturally and emotionally respond to an event of great magnitude. Yeah. And for many people, for whatever reason, the queen was a rock. Right. And now that seemingly permanent fixture in the landscape, that tree or that mountain or that church is gone. And that matters.
and mm. it changes everything forever. That's just that's just demonstrable, uh, objective fact. The Queen does, is gone and nothing will be the same again. And again, does the UK sort of feel like it's been rocked? I mean, I heard a lot of people, uh, you, you know, the likes of Liam Gallagher from Oasis, his little tweet was like gutted. And I'm like, people I didn't expect to be devastated said, I am devastated by the loss of our Queen. And they really genuinely meant it. So maybe there is a place for the monarchy long into the future and maybe kind of that this reinforces well, that fact it, it's you know you could probably you know the debate the, the debate about that is endless you know it, the, the debate you know came before and it will continue after these events as they're unfolding at the moment but yes mm -hmm. you know you're, you point out i didn't know about that so liam gallagher tweeted yeah. about about, yeah. <laughs> about Somewhere. being emotionally affected <laughs> yeah. and whatever it's, it's just interesting mm. it's just interesting because in a, in a time of, we seem to be living through a time of great flux and change. Oh. Everything seems to be up in the air at the moment. Mm. And now the queen has died and that, that has gone into this mix of uncertainty as well. Mm. Mm. And it just seemed, you could say that lots of people without thinking it through, were just spontaneously saying that they wanted to acknowledge mm. and to recognize what the queen had been. Mm. Uh, and and if they do get behind uh, the king, then they will uh, they will be saying that they that there's what they want is mm. a sovereign Britain mm. with mm. a constitutional monarch. Now they might not put that into so many words, mm. but some of their their spontaneous gestures and actions around this event, you know, a picture paints a thousand words, and they might a lot of these people might be demonstrating with their actions. Mm. and their involuntary responses what they want and in a world that seems to be centralizing power mm. where people are afraid of a, a, a totalitarian or authoritarian centralization of power along the mm. sort of chinese communist party model or whatever mm. a surveillance state you know a, a cashless society all, all of these things that are in play at the moment mm. what you might be seeing here in britain are people saying well we understand what we are we are a sovereign people right we are a sovereign nation yeah. We are a constitutional monarchy. They're not saying that in words, mm. but by gesture and deed, you might be able to interpret what they're doing as, as being a, 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 a visceral representation of those that kind of thinking. Those it's, it's just fascinating. It's just fascinating to watch. It's historic. It's historic. It's extraordinary. Plus, it happened two days after she met Liz Truss, which was a big shock to everyone. Although you look mm -hmm. back on the photograph now and you see... Her bruised hand and you realize that she was you know very elderly and she was probably quite ill there's a very there's something else i think that also it transcends the, the personalities in a in a sense it, it doesn't but what i mean is we, we live in a world now where we're uh, removed from death you, you know for so for so many people uh, death happens out of sight yeah. You know, the undertakers come and they take away the loved body and they yes. deal with the body, they wash and dress it out of sight. Sure. And then a, a closed casket appears at a crematorium uh -huh. and that, that body moves, you know, invisibly and silently into the flames that you never see. Mm. The, whole, the whole thing happens out of sight and out of mind. And the, the fact that, we're, that in this process, people are going to walk past the mortal remains of a human being. Yeah. Yeah. And and those last pictures of the Queen, as you say, you know, looking back at them now, you can see that that lady was dying. Yeah, you can. And she but was, and she was, she was, and, no. and, she, and she was, she was also dying a natural death. Yeah. You know, that was you're, what you're looking at. There are the natural processes, the eternal verities. This is life and death. Mm -hmm. And and so so she she was she was reminding people of the inevitability of that. You know, yeah. even the Queen dies. Mm. And over the last couple of years, obviously, with lockdown and all the rest of it, so many people weren't able to go to the bedsides of their dying loved relative. Right. And they couldn't hold their hand. They couldn't make a last image in their heads for mm. a memory. They couldn't attend funerals. Mm. Terrible. A lot of that was taken away for people. And mm. so, you know, you know, maybe to some extent, there's some kind of uh, national catharsis about that. Mm. that people who who lost their grandmother or their great grandmother without being able to say goodbye in any meaningful way maybe 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 this happening with the queen uh, you know becomes you know, you know uh, uh, something that, that ev everyone who who felt that loss and wanted to take it somewhere and couldn't perhaps by going and being and, and going through the ritual mm. of going past the mortal remains of the queen it, that that also could 
could matter for a lot of people. But it's desperately important, I think, for, for us all to remember uh, the, 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 uh, the inevitability of death. Yeah. And that whoever they are and however long they've lived, you know, everyone has a, everyone owes a death. Mm. And, and, the, and the Queen sort of enacting that mm. in, in the way that she did, I think is very important because if you're not properly in awe of death, you're not in awe of life. Right. But, seeing, but seeing the one reminds you of the, the transient wonder of the other. And, right. You know, so, so there's a lot of stuff going on for a lot of people. I a think lot of lessons, someone, right? A lot of yes, life. I think, yeah. I think so. Whether and whether, so some of it's not some of it is 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 about more than than Britain. You know, it's it, it's a it's a reminder. It's a reminder about life and death. And that that, that these almost medieval, you might say, traditions of 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 lying in state. Mm. You know, the, the loved body being on display almost, not quite, but there, mm. there in the room. Mm. And people go past. And then that those images of the of the four children, uh, you know, Charles Edward, uh, Andrew and Anne, you mm. know, uh, the, marking the, the cardinal compass points around the coffin. People walking, imagine being a child and, and walking past and see, knowing that not just that you're looking at the coffin of the queen, yes. but, the, but the four children, children, the princes and the princess there as a guard of honour. Mm. That, I said at the top, symbols matter. That's powerful magic yeah. for people to see and, and to remember. I think people treasure that sense of ceremony and that tradition and I think that's why the royals are important to a lot of people. And I think, uh, you know what, Neil, uh, flights, um, New Zealanders are jumping on flights to go to the UK right now to mm -hmm. be a part of this moment in history, which is which is really interesting. But it's like, it's funny, you know, because I mean, you've, so you've got King Charles and he's about to, he's going to do a tour soon and, and he'll go to Scotland. And do you think he'll be, do you think he'll be well received? I, th I think I think I think certainly yes at the moment my difficult yes my 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 answer to that question would be yes mm. because there's a there's a wave that's that's building and, and will run the length up and down the you know it will run up and down the country for a while mm. and and he will be carried on that wave without a doubt over mm. the long term the future of the monarchy you know these are all these are all questions for a, for another for another uh time but my I think at the moment you know people have been jolted into a a, a new place and and you know you look at you know when a tree falls or a, or a building disappears out the landscape you know, people look around for a bit dazed and confused you know one, wondering what's going to happen next because there's that, mm -hmm. there is that liminal period of uncertainty mm -hmm. um and it's, it's it's been fascinating to watch that there's a family who are you know notionally or they are grieving for the loss of of one of their own mm -hmm. but they have to go into higher gear yeah, right. you know they, they don't they don't get to go and sit in a dark room and and think mm. sad thoughts. Mm. They've got to, they all had to hit the street running. They've got to you know, step the gears, up. The gears mm -hmm. of state, you know, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. Continuity, continuity. You know, the queen is dead. Long live the king. There's yeah. no stopping it. Yeah. And that that also is a is a powerful thing for people to to watch. You know, the fact that you 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 might have imagined that when the queen died, everything would stop. You know that you know the clocks would be covered and the the clocks would stop and the buses would, but no, the whole thing, the whole thing keeps the whole thing keeps moving. And that's that's you know, life, so. isn't it? It's like you know life continues to move. Uh, things happen to us. We lose yes. people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it is. It's a, it, you're right when you put it like that. It's a really fascinating insight into. Well, it, it's just reminding people what's important. I, I guess. You yes, know. I think it is, and, and you know, you, and you say that people are coming from from New Zealand, uh -huh. and I'm sure people will be gathering from all over. You know, Australians and Canadians, and people from the state. Well, they're already here. We're hearing mm. all accents. Mm. All accents are on the Royal Mile already. Mm. Uh, you know, people who just happened to be in in Scotland at this at this time, I, I suppose. Um, but it, I remember when uh, I remember people used to say that when the last of the veterans of the First World War were finally dead. You know, when we had moved beyond the last of the living witnesses to the First World War, that the Armistice Day, Remembrance Sunday on the 11th of November, would would quieten down. Right. You know, there was a there was a there was a general belief that that would be less interest in it. Mm. Um, but it didn't. You know, when we had the 20 uh, when we had the 2015 uh, anniversary of Gallipoli, for example, you know, Australia had to had to put in a ballot system because so many people wanted to go, mm. and it was youngsters. 
in the main. You know, people in their teens and twenties wanted wanted to go. So so that, that that hunger, that need to remember and to and to make remembrance had been passed down through the generations. And and I'm I'm sure a lot of people thought that you know when 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 the Queen died, that the people lining the streets would be old or, yeah. or would be the older, perhaps the older half of the demographic, you know, maybe That's people right. in their fifties and sixties and, and up into into elder years. Mm-hmm. But there's there's teenagers yeah. <laughs> are there. And obviously children are being brought by their parents, whether they whether right. perhaps whether they want to or not, they get taken by the hand because something has happened. But there's there is also a response to it from, from youngsters. And you think that's that's also it's simply interesting to watch that the interest in something as maybe old and dusty as the monarchy. Yes. It it, it isn't just the preserve of older fuddy duddies that remember a different time. Mm. It has been it has been uh, transferred, communicated down through the generations. So then mm. you've got teenagers in, in amongst the crowds on the high street, and you'll see it all over Britain as well. It's it's just all of this is it's all. If you're interested in history, mm. uh, if, if you're interested in people, if you're interested in what makes people, what motivates people, and the way, and if you're interested to see how people will respond, this is a deeply interesting time. Very it's history hard. happening in real time. Isn't it just? It's quite it's quite addictive, and it's addictive to watch. In New Zealand, we've had a lot of material of the Queen's, you know, visits in the past, and actually, you realise you just sort of swept away with it all, and and you're watching it, and and you're just full of respect for someone. You know, I don't if, if people uh, approach me about about my views, I just say, look, I don't care whether you're a royalist or whether you think I am or whether you, you know, uh, I don't care about, you know, labels. I just care th- about the fact that she um, she set an amazing example and she was a, a, an incredibly impressive human being. <laughs> she was wonderful. Hey, Neil, you've yes. spent a lot of time in, in like New Zealand and in the Antipodes and in Australia. Do you think, because there's been a bit of chat in Oz already about, uh, you know the whole Republican thing because they mm-hmm. always seem to they always seem to be quick off the mark when there's ever any you know any excuse to to discuss pulling away. But do you think realistically that um, that New Zealand would uh, would follow suit? Do you think that's likely to happen? My honest answer is, I don't know. I really couldn't put. I wouldn't bet five bucks on it. Never mind. The mortgage. I just don't know yeah. what way that might go. I think that's in the realms of the completely unpredictable. For mm. sure, there will be conversations about republicanism, as you say. When something like this happens, it's always a it's always a, a reason and, and an opportunity to air that conversation again. Right. Um, I, I honestly, I honestly don't know, but I think perhaps in in the same way that probably slightly different, the, the Scottish Nationalist Party will have will be looking on at events as they're unfolding, mm. and they may well have been surprised. They mm. may not have they may not have seen this outpouring coming, coming. Sure. Mm-hmm. and so they have to kind of maybe recalibrate, regroup, have another think amongst themselves before they make their next move. And, mm. and, I, and I, I think and if, they, if they'd thing, said anything now, it would be considered completely inappropriate and undignified. Uh, yeah, mm. uh, yes, yeah. and, and I think republicanism, I think, again, it, you know, it's, it, it probably won't happen this week, but it will happen in the weeks ahead, I'm sure. Uh, and it, it may well, everything is different now. And that's a, that's definitely a conversation to be had. But mm. again, I think, I think perhaps the Republican movement might be watching carefully the, the strength of the emotion that's, that's there and you could say yes it's only and finally about queen elizabeth ii mm. and that with her and with her laid to rest that will you might say that that lays monarchy to rest mm. but but you're also you're also in, inevitably invited to think about what you replace the monarchy with mm. which is which is a politician being made president or, or whatever yeah. you, you have to have a head of state Mm. You know, and when you 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 know in in uh, you know in New Zealand, you know, is it you know is it President Jacinda, you know, in the states, yeah. is it President Joe Biden mm. in Britain, is it is it President Liz Truss, uh, or alternatively, do you just leave that that constitutional role where it is in, in the hands of a, a family mm. who have who have you know they're just that 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 head of state responsibility. Mm. And, and really, I tell you, you also see that you also see that you're reminded of the fact that in a, in a constitutional monarchy, you know, the king he outranks 
the the members of parliament in the commons and the lords right he, yes he just does <laughs> you know he 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 out he outranks and 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 it might be that might be a useful thing to know that that the political realm uh is kind of held held in place in a way held held down <laughs> by the existence of a constitutional monarch mm. but, the, but the question is you know you may well say well it's ridiculous and it's privileged and it's it's archaic and its time has passed but but you need you need a head of state who you're gonna who you're gonna have yeah, <laughs> it, you right. know, you've got to have someone and is the alternative preferable well that's say that's a debate it's a conversation another fascinating conversation to be had in the future Mm. It's interesting. It's going to be so interesting because fancy, fancy um, you know, just get, getting your new PM in place and then a couple of days later you lose, you know, the Queen. Mm. And what, yes. what, what a few days. What, it hasn't hardly been, what, it's four or five days since she passed away. It's not much, is it? Well, it just feels like it's been the most bizarre two years, mm. more than two yeah. years now. We, we, it's hard to remember. I find it hard to remember even the person that I was in... 2018, 2019, mm -hmm. but because the intensity of what's of the sequence of events that has unfolded through 2020, 2021, 2022, and there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. It's like the it's like that was the past, and now we're living in this intense present that just won't quit. Yeah. So we went pandemic, and and then we went into war in war in Europe. Mm. And then, so it's been this incredible, so, so we, we've been sort of whipped along, we've been sort mm. of sped through pandemic, war in Europe, yeah. uh, energy crisis, uh, food shortages, um, mm. uh, climate catastrophe, in inverted commas, and now, you know, the, the, the death of, uh, in Britain, for, in Britain's own intense way, the loss of the monarch and, the, you know, a new prime minister, mm -hmm. sometimes you just feel, when is this going to stop? Can I just get off the bus? Can I just sit down for a minute? Take a and breath. take stop, but you never get to do it because the next thing, the next, and so now you go right. Okay, so the queen has died. What's next? It's That's right. what it feels like. It does, right? I know it must be particularly uh, a very strong emotion in, in the UK as well because everyone's still in mourning there, aren't they? I mean, like, um, there's you're not allowed to play frivolous songs. All sorts of different regulations and rules still. Is that right? No comedy. Yes, that that part of it I don't get because I I think. The, the, the idea that they cancel all these events, I don't, I don't think that's I, that wouldn't be my instinct if if I was in a position to say what should happen. Uh -huh. I say that people should be allowed to go to a football match, and then you know you might have a, a, a five minutes at the beginning where there's maybe the players wear black armbands or maybe there's a moment you know a, a two minute acknowledgement of what's happened. Mm. But I think life, if the if if what's happening, you know, the queen is dead, long live the king. If that tells us anything, it's that you know even in the midst of death, we are in life. And life goes on, and we ought to be mirroring that determination to continue in our own day-to-day -day lives. You know, just as the, the king has had to meet everyone, go to all the ceremonies, make all the speeches, crack on. Yes, your mother has died, but, but you've life and the state has to go on. And mm -hmm. I, I think really people would benefit more psychologically, you know, from you know, the theatres stay open, the show go, the show must go on. No one's bigger than the show. Right. Go to the football matches, go to the rugby matches, put the music events on and the gigs, because that's that is the name of the game. Because that's life. The way that this the way this is being handled is yes, someone has died, but we've got to get on. Mm. And that, that should have been I would let that be mirrored in the wider community.